Hello and welcome to the Friday, April 14th, 2023 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. In today's diary, I wrote about OCSP, the Online Certificate Status Protocol. What sort of prompted uh, this discussion was when I look at my HTTP traffic, so anything that's not TLS, a large number of connections actually are OCSP connections. So I want to dig a little bit in to what the protocol is and why we need it. OCSP is used to check if a particular TLS certificate is still valid. It's a simple API that's embedded in certificates. It's sort of a replacement for certificate revocation lists, even though you sometimes find both certificate revocation list and OCSP URLs embedded in certificates. Now, like any protocol, OCSP is not without sort of some controversy and browsers don't necessarily check whether or not a certificate is still valid using OCSP. Most browsers these days, and talking here about Safari and Google Chrome, will basically download the sets of certificate revocation lists or CRL sets, which are curated by Google and by Apple, and they will use those lists to identify revoked certificates. In particular interesting, Safari will only actually check OCSP if the certificate is revoked according to the certificate revocation list. So it kind of gives the certificate there a second chance if OCSP returns that a certificate is still good. Well, it will actually accept it, which is a little bit weird. The other problem with OCSP is that, as I mentioned, it's in the clear. It's using HTTP. Now, all the messages are digitally signed, so that's not really the problem here. But there is a privacy problem here because you will send the certificate's serial number in the clear, and someone could easily look up what particular website uses a certificate with this serial number. So uh, this sort of breaks some of uh, the privacy that HTTPS tries to establish. In particular, if you're doing things like uh, DNS over HTTPS and such, this OCSP message may actually give you away. Now, there are some other options, like, for example, the server may return that message as part of a certificate. Then you don't have to do this separate lookup. That's referred to as OCSP stapling and is somewhat common. But in short, certificate revocation is still a little bit hit and miss, sometimes more miss. And the privacy part, not sure how severe this is because most people aren't really doing anything like encrypted uh, client hellos or such that would protect the host name you're connecting to. And a quick update on the NTP vulnerabilities I talked about. Yes, that we now have at least an initial sort of official statement from the NTP.org project. Doesn't look as severe as it originally appeared. Uh, One of the issues here is that the library that's actually affected by these vulnerabilities is not used by the actual NTP daemon. It's more used by command line tools uh, like NTPQ and such that are used to interact uh, with the NTP daemon. So uh, this will significantly reduce the likelihood of anything here being exploited. And then we have two interesting vulnerabilities in SecurePoint's UTM appliances. Uh, these are essentially uh, firewalls. And the first vulnerability is a fairly straightforward authentication bypass. This was found by RCE Security, in particular Julian Ahrens. And uh, the way this works is if a user logs in, everything is good. Now, if shortly after, while the session is still active, another user attempts to log in, but the login fails, they still get the last valid session ID back, which of course logs them in as well. The second vulnerability is a little bit more tricky. It's sort of one of those heartbleed like memory leaks where you get uh, bits and pieces of memory back in your responses. Well, uh, this can also then be used to essentially extract session IDs from memory. 
patches are available for the devices. Actually, RCE reported the vulnerability back in January and only took a day to fix these vulnerabilities. Uh, good on RCE for giving us a bit more time to actually patch. And Google announced the general availability of its assured open source software service. What this really refers to is that Google will offer select popular open source software packages for download from its monitored locations. These packages will be verified. They will continuously be tested and examined for vulnerabilities also S bombs will be made available for these packages. A pretty interesting service. So let me know if you like this and if you take advantage of this free Google service. And well, uh, that's it for today. So thanks, of course, for listening. You may have seen some Sans Fire banners popping up on the Internet Storm Center websites. It's sort of time to get started on this again and uh, think on it. So if you want to see us in July, uh, well, uh, take a look at what courses you have to offer there. There will again be sort of some additional content from the Internet Storm Center that will be offered in the form of evening talks and such. Well, this is it for today. Thanks for listening and talk to you again on Monday. Bye.